Absolutely. This fourth quarter interception by cornerback Terry Noble preserves the first UC shutout since 1982. The Dave Curry Show. Brought to you by Utapol Shane Link, Cincinnati's Brewery. The Cincinnati Gas and Electric Company. The Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company of Cincinnati. Provident Travel. And by Hugo Cincinnati. Good morning. Welcome to the Dave Curry Show. Following a 25-0 thrashing by the Bearcats of Louisville in Louisville last night. Coach, that sun's a little brighter this morning. It certainly is, Tim. And uh, we went down to play a Louisville team that uh, was fired up and we had a tough week of practice and I think our players wanted to redeem themselves and uh, to morning is a lot better than last week. Last week was an awful week, wasn't it? Not much fun. <laughs> <laughs> you were impressive on both sides of the ball, I thought. Offensively, you took it, drove it straight down their throats. The first drive, 97 yards, 17 plays was most impressive. Well, it's something we'd gone into the game feeling like we needed to uh, move the ball on the ground to eat some time off the clock and keep our defense off the field, plus get some confidence back in our offense. Uh, we did get the ball in the end zone for a touchdown, but defensively, we really rose the occasion last night, and I think played one of our better defensive games uh, in the years we've been here. How does it feel to have your first shutout? Well, it feels good. Uh, it's something we can take into Penn State uh, this week and uh, build on. Not only did you limit them in terms of total yards, but you got the turnovers you expect of an aggressive, tough defense. Well, big plays on defense. Obviously, the, the goal line stand, and then with the fumble and uh, uh, getting on that ball really helped. And then the interceptions made big plays. Uh, uh, Mike Kelly had a big interception that turned the game around, and, of course, uh, the one at the end of the game uh, kind of put it away for us. Only one bad thing last night. It was on the road. I wish the home fans could have seen that performance. It was brilliant. Let's, uh, let's not keep them waiting any longer. Let's take a look at the first half highlights and Danny McCoy throwing from deep in his own territory. Roosevelt Mukes makes this catch here, and Rosie uh, really went up at well after the ball last night and probably had one of his better games catching the ball. This is McKinney bouncing outside, and Al carried the ball 34 times last night. Uh, got some leg cramps later on in the game, but he really worked hard. Here's Leonard Cry running up the middle of the offensive line. Uh, Pat Lavelle, uh, our offensive center, has played well the last two weeks. The coin throws here to a good play uh, again by Mukes uh, going up getting a curl pattern for a first down. Rosie's got that great vertical leap. He's only about 5'9 or so. Well, he gets real tall when he leaves the ground, you bet. Uh, this is McCoy on offense uh, with uh, Cry in motion. Uh, here's a good play by McKinney cutting back. Uh, Al just became a real workhorse last night and uh, played very well. Great combination. The holes were there, but he made yards beyond the hole as well. That's McCoy sneaking for a bad spot, and now we come back and uh, we run the ball in the end zone, and it seems like it's uh, five minutes before they call it, but uh, this was a big touchdown for us because it was also a time-consuming drive. Now, keep in mind, Louisville had taken that thing down close to touchdown territory, and you took over at the three-yard three yard line, 97 yards and 17 plays. That's impressive. Back on offense, uh, this is McKinney hitting the seam up the middle, and looking uh, here, Al's running very strong. That's Steve Sanders, the split end that uh, started last night. Uh, Steve is playing well each week. McCoy's back to pass over here, and he ducks underneath, and look at this fine catch to Sanders. Great poise by Danny. Uh, Dan played uh, with much more uh, control last night. Obviously, running the ball helps him uh, when we're able to throw it. Uh, here's uh, Al making some extra efforts, and uh, he's got pretty good feet. Again, McCoy back up under the center, and this is uh, McKinney down, just running it straight ahead. Our game plan last night, Tim, was to go right at them and see if we just couldn't control the ball. Uh, here's a uh, big play by Louisville, and I might add that their fans at that end of the end zone were very noisy, and it hurt us in our signal calling, and they came up with a big drive. So the drive stalls. Here's Jay Gruden, the Louisville quarterback, and he's sacked. Well, uh, uh, Stewart's all over him. Uh, Stewart had a big play last night, of, I believe four sacks, and look at our defense swarming the ball. Our defensive linemen played very well last night. As you'll see on the replays, we've got good pressure on the quarterback. Here's a uh, big interception by Mike Kelly. Uh, 
uh, Mike gets better each week. The thing that pleases me here is there's defensive people blocking on the interceptions. Here's a reverse with Bill Davis. Bill played better last night, his second uh, game as a wide receiver in college, and I think he showed much improvement. But with the interception the defense gives us, we're back on offense, and uh, here's McCoy scrambling uh, again for a big first down. And the defense gave us good field position. That was a late uh, hit on McCoy. Again, look at McKinney, hit a seam, and he's a good move there and into the end zone. You take that offensive touchdown there, Tim, and you give credit to your defense because they got the turnover, got us in good field position, and that helps us put the points on the board. 14-yard run by McKinney. Here's Phil Insolanco with his second PAT, and the Bearcats lead 14 to nothing. And here's Louisville back on offense. Cincinnati on defense. Here's a big tackle. Uh, that's Chris Asbeck. Uh, Chris has played well uh, both games. And uh, here's uh, Stewart again, Asbeck. Waller Johnson, the defensive lineman, on the quarterback. Tom Zabotis playing very hard. So there's halftime, 14-0. I would imagine the officials got to the point where they were starting to count. They thought that Louisville had too many men in the backfield. Well, it was a big uh, pass rush, of course. We went into the ball game knowing defensively we, we need to put pressure on the quarterback, and run defense was very important for us. So I'm very pleased, at least this morning, uh, with the defensive effort. Well, I'll tell you, those guys are playing inspired football. It's fun to watch them. They're all over the place. Vaughn Booker, for example, is a sideline to sideline sort of a guy, and you watch the cohesiveness in that veteran secondary. It's fun. Well, it's a lot more fun in the locker room afterwards, too. I'll bet it is. We'll come back and take a look at the second half highlights. 14 to nothing at halftime right after this. Nothing at halftime. The defense has been dominant. The offense has shown that it can do it not just with a big play, but just ram it down somebody's throat. You have to be happy at halftime. We're pleased. Uh, we lost our quarterback at the last play of the half, and uh, we didn't know his status during the halftime. They said he sprained his knee. But what was important is to remind our team that uh, last week Louisville had come back the second half and had beaten Tulane. Last year against Louisville, they'd come back very strong and, and had a chance to win the game. So it's 0-0 zero, zero going into the uh, third quarter for us as far as we're concerned. We need to go back out and play. Prognosis on Danny? Uh, it's a sprained knee, and we won't know uh, today, tomorrow, how, uh, how much he's going to get back on it. But it is a sprain, mild Let's, sprain. All right, let's roll those second-half highlights with the Bearcats leading by a score of 14 to nothing as we go to the third quarter in Louisville on offense. Jay Gruden, their junior quarterback at the controls. There's a good tackle. Uh, I tell you what we're doing, Tim, is we're swarming to the football defensively. They're, they're playing with a lot more confidence. Mike Kelly, again, the inside backer. Uh, Von Booker did a good job. Here's a sweep play. That's the Botus. Noble. Uh, aggressive football. We get a penalty there for a face mask, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of white shirts on the ball down in the goal line look at this here that's uh, Mike Kelly with a big hit this gives them a first down on the one yard line in the next play here Louisville turns the ball over and there's a mad scramble for it and I believe it's Mike Kelly that got the ball there it is I have to apologize to Mike they told us in the press box it was Art Sheffield but it was in fact Mike Kelly on the fumble recovery well Art Sheffield got two fumbles the week before so we were getting used to seeing him around the ball and he's played very well so we get the ball back, and uh, now this is Leonard Cry. Leonard's that big bowling ball that just keeps running upfield week in and week out, and he, uh, he's improving. This is the freshman, uh, Dwayne Hunter, from Princeton High School, who is, gets better every day. You see him doing some positive things, and uh, he sprained his foot. There was a time last night when all three running backs were out of the game. Bill Davis is much improved, as we see, catching a big pass for a first down. Phil Insolaco now is going to hit a field goal. This was a drive that stopped, and he pops this one through. That was a big kick for us. So now it's 17 to nothing. Bearcats pretty much in control of the situation. You'd driven about 65 yards and then took the field goal that time, and here's the defense. I believe Louisville switched quarterbacks here, at Tim. This is a bonus forcing a sack out of bounds, Sheffield pursuing. Uh, defensively, we're beginning to think about shutout now. It was in our minds, and uh, we kept talking about it. The offense, this is uh, Andrew Stewart, big hit, uh, big sack. He stopped rolling at about Murray, Kentucky. Phil Poirier is in the uh, uh, 
uh, defensive front there. Phil's a young freshman that's beginning to play a little bit and uh, uh, he's been a good addition to our defensive line. Here's a screen pass. And once again, that's Poirier. He comes back, causes a fumble, and Andrew Stewart recovers it. Now, those are two defensive linemen running to the ball, causing a fumble, recovering it. Good play. Now, here's McCoy, a little bit stiff-legged, you can see. He'd been hurt on the last play of the first half, but he dumps it off to McKinney, and Al gets more. That was a screen pass that uh, Dan uh, is not moving very well here, and he had to dink it off. That's about a three-yard pass for a 20-yard gain. Here's McCoy upstairs to Bill Davis in the corner of the end zone. Bill makes the catch, dodges the receiver, and gets in the end zone. Good play, good touchdown. Watch this one, folks. I've never seen it done this way, Coach. Well, we had, uh, in our scouting report, uh, Mike Clark, our special teams uh, coach, had seen a, a loophole. We practiced it, and Bill Davis saw it, and just took off up front and got two points. I've seen guys raise up and go outside with the ball I have never seen the ball snap and that uh, holder just goes straight ahead and get the two so it's 25 nothing you see in the lead now back on defense again hungry to preserve that shutout look at this Andrew Stewart again that's Hollis Smith Poirier again lots of defense alignment around the ball this is the first series now for Eric Lawton a junior college transfer from California after Gruden re-injured that knee on which he had surgery last year well, this is Noble making a big interception. Perkins is blocking. Uh, it, again, uh, preserves a shutout, a big turnover. Again, the defense was very deserving of, uh, of the shutout, and uh, it certainly has helped. Look at this one up top. Again, Delano Kelly uh, making the interception. Uh, his progress went into the end zone. They spotted the one-yard line. They tried not to get that shutout, but uh, we came on the field and put the game away. The rule is that if your momentum carries you in, it's a touchback, and certainly the momentum carried him in. The Nobody does it quite as good as Cincinnatians do. Find out who you and your neighbors voted the best and worst of Cincinnati. Wednesday night at 10.